Hey guys, Chicago injury lawyer Scott DeSalvo here. And in today's video, the topic is, hey, I broke my hand. What do I need to know? What is my case worth? So uh, I was talking to a guy who broke his hand and he hired me. Um, the doctors didn't know whether he needed hand surgery or not. And he hired me because he was getting nervous because he figured he broke his hand and they would wrap it and in two weeks it would be fine. But it turned out that it was more serious than that, and he was getting really nervous about the injury uh, because he's a guy who works in a place where he has to use his hands all day. And so he was getting nervous about it, and he wanted to make sure he was protected because the uh, insurance claims company he was talking about was getting a little sketchy. They were asking him some leading questions, you know, suggesting that he was breaking rules, and it was his fault, and things like this was making him uncomfortable. This is what I always tell people. If you're talking to a claims company or an insurance company and they're asking you questions and you like you're getting a read on the energy or you're getting a read on kind of like the way things are going and you're uncomfortable, trust your instincts. They're not <laughs> they're usually not uh, objectively adjusting your claim for a fair outcome for you. They're usually positioning you to beat you. It's like a chess match. Anybody who plays chess, I was watching this uh, documentary on chess. I know that sounds boring as hell, but it was actually pretty interesting. I guess the way chess works is if you don't make those initial moves in a chess game, then it's impossible to win the game after the halfway point or after the one-third point. Now, that isn't a perfect analogy because there are a lot of unfortunate circumstances and things that I can fix even if I'm involved later in the case. But the later the case goes on and the more messed up the case gets, it definitely hurts your chance to win the case and it hurts your case value. So that's something to think about. But anyway, this guy gave me a call about his hand injury and uh, you know he was worried about it. And so the, the thing you need to know about a hand injury is your hand is everything. Like whether it's work, like whether you're white collar and you pipe or you chart or whether you are blue collar and you are a plumber or an electrician or a laborer or you work in a factory if you have a hand injury and you end up not being able to use that hand your ability to earn money goes way down even if you're able to use the hand imagine having to go the rest of your life with pain in your hand um, you know, going through the rest of your life with pain in your hand like that. Um, we have a little controversy here because a trucker is upset that somebody didn't drive in front of a funeral procession. I think he understands now. Enjoy the... Can you hear that? I'm wearing my little lavalier mic. Maybe you can't hear it that well. But anyway, that's what's happening right now. we got a funeral procession passing in front of us and our trucker friend doesn't know. <laughs> anyway, uh, maybe he'll uh, wise up. It, so, so basically, if your hand is all messed up, it can have a profound effect on your life and your ability to earn. Or even if it's messed up and it's the best and you can go back to work and you got pain in that hand every day, that's a big deal, right? So a lot of times people think, oh, well, if you hurt your hand, it's not that big a deal. It's not like a neck injury or a back injury. It's serious. It's a, a hand injury is serious. Now, whenever my clients have a hand injury and they are uh, looking for advice about what to do and a doctor tells them that they want to do surgery, you know, if they really need the surgery, then I tell them to get it. But I am very cautious because... Any doctor who is honest with you will admit that your hand is a very delicate structure. It's very strong. It's very durable. But when you do surgery on it, you don't want to, you know, put scar tissue in there, cause arthritis in there if you can avoid it. But sometimes hand surgeries are, are unavoidable. Like I've represented a lot of people with crush, crush injuries where their hands get caught in a machine and they have no choice but to have multiple hand surgeries. Sometimes they come out remarkably good. Sometimes they don't. If, it, if you were my family member, I would tell you, make sure that surgery is the only option 
if that's the route you're going and make sure you tried more conservative care like therapy or whatever whatever the doctor is recommending as an alternative before you go for surgery now obviously if you have a catastrophic profound injury to your hand and you need surgery get it but just be careful about it really that's the advice i give everyone Unless the doctor says you, like, for example, in a neck or back injury, if your nerve is getting pinched and it, your leg is going numb, let's say if you got a pinched nerve in your lower back and your whole leg is going numb and they try traction and they try everything to, like, reduce the, the you know, the nerve being pinched in your, in your, you know, going down your leg and it's not working, you don't want that nerve to be damaged or die, right? You want... To get the pressure off that nerve that would be an example where you have to do emergency surgery or if your hand gets crushed and the only way to put the bones back in alignment is surgery you do the surgery right um so anyway like hand injuries much more serious than a lot of people think a lot of times they think oh yeah, it's a hand it's not that big a deal but it has a huge effect on your life just like any other injury the more treatment the higher the medical bills and the more serious outcome, the more damaged, not perfect outcome you have, the more value the case has, okay? So in other words, imagine somebody who has a hand injury and they do a little therapy and in three months they're okay and their hand is perfect. They got all their strength, they got all their range of motion. Let's say the same guy has the problem and does the therapy, that doesn't do it, and now he's got permanent strength and range of motion problems with his hand. When he works, he has to stop all the time and his boss fires him because he can't be productive at work anymore. S same injury, different outcome. That second case is worth a heck of a lot more money. And that's, you know, that's pretty much true about all injury cases. The last thing I'll say about hand injury cases is make sure that you work with a lawyer because a lawyer is going to be able, if it's a lawyer who knows what they're doing, they're going to be able to get you maximum value for the hand injury, especially if you're talking about a hand injury that has a permanent component to it. And the problem is you don't know if it's permanent or not until far, far into the case, right? So it's always a good idea to work with an attorney who knows what they're doing, who has experience with hand injuries and is familiar with the medicine, right? So that's pretty much all I got to tell you, folks. Um, I'll just wrap it up and say I hope you and your family do not have hand injuries and your family is healthy and safe. But if you or anyone you know has been injured in an accident, you need to talk to a lawyer. That's what I do for a living. I'm happy to talk to you. And you can do that any time, night or day. You can call me. Could be in the middle of the night. Could be on a holiday. Doesn't matter. My team always answers the phone at... 312-500-4500. That's 312-500-4500. Happy to talk to you. Even if you don't have a case, I'll answer your questions, okay? So last thing I'll say is I have great tools on my website. I have the case cash calculator. Tells you what your case might be worth. I have the good case calculator. In 15 seconds flat, both of those tools answer your questions. They're on my website. Link in the description. Completely free. Check them out. Um, if you enjoy my videos, please like and subscribe. And if you wouldn't mind leaving me a five-star review on Google, it would really help me out. Link in the description. You just paste that URL, click five stars, say a kind word, hit submit. Five seconds for you, invaluable favor to me. So if you don't mind doing it, I'd really appreciate it. And the last thing I will say is thank you for watching and have a great day.